Hey guys, welcome back to the 8th episode of the Magic Shooter tutorial. In this episode, we'll be setting up some code for the health, as well as some UI to display our health. So we'll be able to take more than one hit, as well as see our health bar on the top left corner. The first thing we want to do is set up a variable for the player's health. In editor variables of player controller, we can set up a variable for the player's max health. and in private variables, a variable for the current amount of health. Make note that the max health is an int and the current health is a float, implying that damage taken from the enemy doesn't have to be whole numbers. In awake, we want to set the current health to the maximum health, so that the start of each level or restart, the player is at full health. Now, since we have health, we want to properly set up our attack system. Remember that our attacks are powered by our health, and that whenever we attack, we take some damage. So in update, we want to call decrease health each time we attack. We also want to update our decrease health method, so we don't just restart the scene each time we die. We'll subtract the attack damage from our current health until our health is less than zero. Only then do we want to reload the scene. Make sure you save the script and we can go to the editor to see this in action. If we set the player's max health to 50, and set the enemy damage to 0.1, we shouldn't die immediately, but if you stand in the cloud long enough, you should die eventually. Similarly, the enemy has an amount of health as well. In enemy controller, we'll decrease health in the enemy like we do with the player. This means that we'll move instantiate and destroy functions from the on collision enter to this function where it gets called when the enemy dies. Now we want to be able to visualize our health. To visualize this, we are going to use Unity's built-in UI system. In order to use Unity's UI system, there must exist an event system and a canvas. The event system allows for certain triggers or events to occur such as button presses. The canvas is an area that all UI elements will exist in. In hierarchy, create a new UI image. If we don't already have one, an event system and a canvas will be created. We can rename the canvas to HUD to make it more clear what the canvas is for. In the canvas scaler of the HUD, set UI scale mode to scale with screen size. This will allow our UI elements to scale properly with different screen sizes. To manage the UI, we're going to create a script. HUD controller. This script will have a function that changes the size of our health bar depending on how much health we have. First, we want to have a reference to the health bar. UI elements have a slightly different transform than other objects. They have rec transforms, which include anchor and pivot points, which help to determine where and how they'll scale with the canvas. Rec transforms are also affected by the parent object's rec transform. We also have a variable to keep track of the original width of the health bar so that we can change the length based on the health accordingly. We're going to set this to the horizontal delta size. We also need a function to call that will update the health bar when the health is decreased. It will change the width of the health bar depending on the size.
Back in the editor, we want to attach HUD controller to the HUD canvas and rename the image to health bar BG for background. This will be the background of the health bar. We want this to be anchored at the top left corner of the screen and adjust the position, height, and width of the image. The position I have is at 105, negative 25, width at 200, and height at 40. Since this is the one in the background, we're gonna set the color to be a brown color. And like I've mentioned before, if these coordinates don't fit your screen or don't look great, feel free to adjust it to your own screen. To create the actual health bar, we're gonna duplicate this game object, which we can do by pressing Control D. Since it's lower in the hierarchy than the background image, it will get rendered on top of the background. Rename it health bar and change the color of the image to be a shade of green. Since the bar will slide towards the left, we want to change the pivot point of the health bar. Right now, it's set to the center, so decreasing the width will cause it to go towards the middle. The pivot should be set at 0, 0, which is at the top left corner. Now, you can slide it towards the left since the center of the object is the top left. Since this is the one that's actually changing size, we're going to attach this transform to the HUD script. Additionally, we'll also add a crosshair to the HUD that will aim where you're going to attack. Create a new UI image in HUD. The position I have is 28, negative 20, and width is 100, height is 100. This aligns to where the attack shoots out from. In order to update the amount of health that the player has, we want to give the HUD script to the player controller script so that the update health method can be called there. In decrease health, we want to call HUD dot update health and pass in the percentage of the health that the player is at. Back in the editor, we're going to drag the HUD canvas object into the player controller component. Next, we're going to be adding health pills to the game. There'll be a healing item that enemies can randomly drop when killed. First, we're going to create a new empty game object, health pill. Attach a 3D capsule to the health pill as a child. Change the X rotation in the transform of the 3D capsule to 40, so that it's at an angle. Delete the capsule collider from the capsule object, because we'll be using the parent object for collision. To make the capsule look more appealing, we're going to add the health pill material provided in the materials folder. Materials go on to models to provide animations, colors, and textures. This will go on the rush render of the capsule in the material section, and it will replace the default material that's already on it. In the parent object, we want to create a script to allow it to heal the player. So we'll create a new script called health pill, and we'll have a variable that determines how much health the pill restores. We also want some way for other scripts to access this variable, so we're going to be using the C-sharp shortcuts for quick getter method. Now we're going to attach this script and a box collider onto the health pill object. So that it matches the size of the capsule, set the size of the collider to 2, 2, 2, and we want to check the box is trigger. We don't want this to be a physical object, like something the player will faceplant into. A trigger allows collision calls to still be made, while not being a physical, tangible object. So all of the onCollision functions will have their own onTrigger equivalent. We'll set health gain to 2 for now. To help with the player detection, we also want to tag the health pill and the child capsule with the health pill tag. In addition, to give our health pill some life, we'll attach the rotate around self script 
onto the health pill parent object. Let's make sure we save this as a prefab so we can spawn it later. Now, so far, we have a way to lose health, but not a way to gain health, which is what we'll be doing with healing items. We'll change that by making a new function called increase health. In health slash dying methods, create an increase function method that will increase the amount of health that the player has. The check for this function is if the current health is more than the max health. If it is, then we reset it. Then we update the HUD using the update health function that we had from before. Now, we need a way to access health bills. In player controller, create a new region for collisions. Like with the other collision methods, we can use trigger events to let the player controller script know when we've collected a health pill. Since this is a trigger, we'll use on trigger enter. Now we want to check for the tag health pill and increase the player's health. To do that, We'll call the function increase health. Once we've collected the pill, we want to destroy the game object. Now, we need to write code for how the enemies drop pills. They shouldn't drop them all the time, just some of the time. To do this, we have some variables that we want to add to the editor variables section of enemy controller. Float for the rate that health pills drop out of enemies and the health pill prefab. Next, we want something to spawn the health pill at the rate that we decided. So when the enemy dies, that is when the health pill can spawn. So check the rate of dropping the health pill and check that with a random number. If it falls within the bounds of the drop rate, we instantiate a health pill. In the editor, we want to set up the health pill drop rate on the ghost enemy to 0 0.5 and attach the health pill prefab to the ghost enemy. We want to make sure that we update the enemy prefab as well before we hit play. So now we have a health system, both regenerating and losing health, all set up as well as some snazzy UI to go along with it. In the next episode, we'll set up enemy spawning and the environment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.